I I uh, I had a teacher back in the day. She wore like this little. She had a necklace, and it kind of looked like a like a canteen almost, like a leathery canteen. And she would take hair from her friend's head and put it into the little pouch around her necklace. And so, you'd, like sometimes, like you'd see her. Who is there this? Is, like, teacher I had back in high school, and there'd be like an all school assembly or whatever, and she'd be like. Yeah, you know, would just be watching the assembly, and you'd see Miss uh, Miss Weber just kind of like creep up from behind, yank a hair out. Chance would be like, just walk away and put it in her pouch. No way. Yeah, that's, that's a true story. Why would anyone fire her? It's just hair. It sounds like a freak. Oh yeah, big time. Ooh, that's like All right. So, uh, for today, you were supposed to come to class with. Burn the witch annotated. Uh, this is what, what hold on a second, right here. Um, this is my crack at annotating Burn the Witch. Tons of fun stuff on here. Okay. Uh, what did I what for annotating? What did I encourage you to do? Annotate. Which means no floor. Writing things out. Get into the meeting. Details, 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 diction, word choice, metaphor, ask questions, notice vague words and wonder what does the vague word mean? I just quick one. What sort of words popped up in the first stanza that should make you go, who is that person or what is that? Mr. Krogman? Uh, I don't really know what this is. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Nine, 100% of you should have circled this and been like, what's this? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This. What's this? Um, look at the second stanza. What's a word that's popping out to you that should be similar to this? We. 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 Who's we? We don't need to know right now when we read the poem. But you sure as heck must be like, I'm going to figure that out later. So um, we're going to engage in a little interesting activity to start off with right now. I'm just going to have you come up here one by one. And I want you to share an annotation on the poem. We're just going to – we need to like kind of break loose from this over-reliance on like the need to raise hands. We can have a conversation and do things in a respectful manner, just kind of like understanding social cues. What's that? Okay. <laughs> All right. So what you're going to do is you're going to come up. You're going to make your annotation. If you wrote a ton of stuff down, you're just write, making one annotation. And then you're talking to the class about what went into that annotation. So I will demonstrate so that you know what you're getting into. Everybody should be able to get something up on the board. I would come up and I'd go up. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, uh, line number one. I thought it was pretty weird. Stay in the shadows. Word that popped out for me. Shadows. Hey, shadows. It's like shadows are dark. You know what I mean? And so it's like asking us to stay in the dark. Stay in the dark. And I'm just thinking to myself, like, what does that mean? They, you know, they don't want the light on what's happening here. So there it is. That's my annotation. And then I can go back and sit down. Okay. So... Identify it, mark it, say what went into the annotation. Notice how poorly this handwriting is. Because yeah. it doesn't matter. I just want to see, just walk through one thing you noticed and what you noticed about it. Do it in a respectful manner. No, David, David, no. Hey, please, you. Oh, I'm out for a second. It is more important that we're paying attention to what they're saying than jockeying for position. There's much to say here. It's okay. Walk us. Um, us alert. So. I don't know. This just popped up to me because, like, cheer at the gallows, I think of it as, like, a sad thing, and they're, like, cheering at the gallows. Okay. I just thought it was weird. So I'm just going to write weird. <laughs> yeah. They're kind of being forced to cheer. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. I guess it's going to lie. Oh. 
right here at abandoned all recently and avoid all eye contact. Um, people want to stay calm. So even if you aren't a witch and you know that if you act in any weird way, um, oh, not abandoned all reason. I meant to do it right there. Do not react. So avoid. So avoid eye contact. And do not react. Yeah. Those are the lines of your notes. Okay. Right there. Yep. Perfect. Um, yeah, they, it's just saying like, do not react, avoid all eye contact, meaning like, don't raise suspicion, even if you're not a witch, you might get blamed. Mm -hmm. Well, I thought it was kind of weird that they're telling you to sing a song that goes like this. And I thought that was kind of like, whoa, that's kind of ironic because like when you think of jukeboxes you think like yeah happy 80s music milkshakes and stuff so now you're thinking 50s whatever so i'm just gonna <laughs> care enough so people like milkshakes in the 80s too mr brandon <laughs> i never discounted that yeah back up kid. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so who stuck around the tables that kind of stuck out to me because I just thought of the crucible where there was very little evidence to call people a witch. And it just led to all of these sort of things need to be taken care of. Like a bunch of So you've been identified a cause effect relationship. Yeah. Why do all those things happen as a result of loose talk around tables? Because people have paranoia and they're <coughs> they want to uh, save themselves. In a way. So maybe identify loose talk too as like that's a dangerous yeah. thing. That's a thing that leads to paranoia. Also, is loose talk a literal phrase? No. Right, so what does loose talk mean? Saying something like or saying false things. Saying yeah, saying stuff without considering consequences. Because it's like they're addressing the reader in a way. Um, pick out another word like that. All right. Um, in that same line. We. Yeah. So there's a we and a you. Okay. So the you is who? The reader. And the we is. We don't know. Put a question mark next to it. Then. And then put reader next to you. All right. Okay. Identifying that. So I saw the red crosses gave me a very culty vibe. Like, I don't know how to write that. Oh. Because red is also the color of blood, so you don't know if they're like painting blood crosses on people's doors or like Terry French. Yeah, well, that's interesting that you bring that up. Does anybody have any um, further context to bring to the idea of red crosses on wooden doors? I can't remember which one it is, but I'm pretty sure it's um, when the town or whoever's in charge suspects someone of being a witch, they threw a cross on the door saying, like, don't go near this house. Yeah, so kind of a more focused. Yeah. Can you say that? Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Was that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. A lot of weird stuff. There's a lot of questions. I just saw this line. Like next to burn the witch, I feel like this is like the darkest line too. And it's just kind of intentional. I feel like uh, everyone is, you know, purposely trying to go after whoever uh, whoever you are or the people. Uh, why is that? What, what's evil? You said evil, right? Yeah. Like it, I feel like it's just like the darkest line next to burn the witch because everyone's. You know, so what about this? Is a roundup gives you darkness? Because like I just I can just picture a bunch of people just coming together like the video and it just yeah, yeah. what what happens during a roundup people they're trying to capture people and who and you know inevitably during a roundup who gets caught up who gets rounded up innocent people some no matter if your roundup is justified or not when you're just rounding up a bunch of folks it's likely that's going to be brown. very good wonderful mr Grogan. who's next and So this line right there kind of reminds me of like the abandon all hope 
because like they didn't really have a reason to blame people, they just made false accusations. Yeah. And if we go back to like what Ms. Cronson was talking about, how this poem is addressing the reader, why would the poet implore the reader to abandon all reason? I'm asking just generally. Why would the author implore the reader to abandon all reason? To stay to stay with the crowd, I guess, and not get caught. You don't stand out, stay with the crowd. You you need to abandon reason in order to function in this. Yes. Oh. Oh, yeah. No one is safe. That's a really interesting line there. Because, oh, well, you talk first, Violet. Uh, that, like, that popped out to me because the messages are usually like really short, like the people giving information to the people who want it. And if you're shooting them, you all you want is that information. You don't care about like the messages. You just want what they have. Or are you restricting the flow of information? Okay. Also, like to go to kind of go back to Krogman, we have this is a roundup, we have burn the witch, and now we have shoot the messengers, right? The first things in that list, abandon reason, avoid eye contact, do not react. Those are like personal things that you do, right? What's different about those three things and shoot the messenger? Take action versus to not take action. Right. And so that, I mean, alarm bells should be going off there. Very good. Who's next? So the panic attack, I thought that like not only are they um, afraid of witches in their town, but being labeled as a witch. And what word maybe, what stands out in that line? Um, panic attack. Panic, right? And then did anyone identify like low flying and ask himself the question like? Usually like, it's like a plane is <laughs> right? What say? Like on a plane, it's way up in the air, you're not worried about it. Yet if it's just like hovering over your head or it comes in real close, it just seems so much more real to you because it's like right there. This is not some sort of like existential panic. This is a thing that's affecting your your day to day. Yeah. Right? Very good. Uh, who would have one? Alstead, Rohau, Brown. <coughs> Keller, you want that to count as your. Uh, yeah. Annotation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. Is that all you were doing? Yeah, because I already said it. Okay. All right. Uh, I noticed that in the song, Six Pence, that's like kind of like the jukebox part because of Six Pence is a type of coin. You use a coin in the jukebox, maybe? Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you about it in a second. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's, a, that's a callback to the jukebox, yeah. but also different than the jukebox, right? So what's different about sing a song on the jukebox that goes and sing a song of sixpence that goes. Do any of you have children? <laughs> no? no. Uh, do any of you recreationally read nursery rhymes? Is it the goose one? Yeah. 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 I was confused. Is it like, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, take a seat, Mr. Brown. That, this is, uh, don't, don't feel bad if this did not spark in your head. It's only because I read Rhett Mother Goose stories every night that I was immediately brought to 
when I saw Sing the Song of Sixpence. What? Sing a Song of Sixpence. So this is an illusion, an illusion that they're making in Burn the Witch to this song. What sort of connection can we draw? What sort of line can we draw from this song to Burn the Witch? Again, this is a, this is a children's Mother Goose bedtime rhyme. Sing a song of sixpence, a pocket full of rye, four and twenty blackbirds baked in a pie. All right, so right here, it's a little dark, right? Why? <laughs> baking blackbirds in a pie? Like baking crows in a pie? That doesn't sound tasty. Um, when the pie was open, the birds began to sing. Wasn't that a dainty dish to set before the king? Okay, so the pie's open. The birds. Birds pop out. Of the, okay. um, the, ki the king was in the counting house counting out his money. The queen was in the parlor eating bread and honey. Um, the maid was in the garden hanging out the clothes. Along came a blackbird and snipped off her nose. Oh, oh my God! Is that it? Is Dark that turn. That's the whole. That's what the whole the song. Do? So now we gotta do all this to figure out what. The song is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So, so kind of like generally, um, what's interesting here about this end part? Who is who has served the the pie? The king. The king. Okay. So the pie was baked for the king. Um, which suggests that, like, who is kind of, like, at fault for this bird pie even being a thing? The king. The king is the one who wants the bird pie, the maid, or the servants make the bird pie. However, who is suffering the consequences for this gross act? The maid. The maid. Like, the cat, she is, like, the innocent casualty in the king's sin. Is there anybody who can draw a connection between that and what's happening in Burn the Witch? A lot of innocents were innocent guys. Yeah. And maybe bring that back to the uh, to the video. There's a clear, like, mayor of the town, right? Yeah. Is, is he suffering any consequences of these actions? Even though he is the one who's sort of, like, orchestrating this whole thing. So, they just, just fun things to know. All right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you know. Uh, Rohal Gausted, uh, Abbott, and Shader, you just walked in. You have to get up here and make an annotation on the poem. Right now. And Gausted's uh, after Gausted. Okay, so I just Ooh. <laughs> okay. Um, can't find it. Oh, like, if you float, you burn. Because, like, the witches would get burned. Like, if Because they would like, they thought they were made of wood, so that like wood burns. Yeah. And how does that, if you float, you burn, kind of relate to what's happening in the lines below it? I mean, were there any, were there any, ever any real witches that floated besides Holler's mother? <laughs> no. Right? There is never anybody floating. So what could be going on here? Mr. Darrow? I was, was going to say there's some like, historical evidence like they would tie, like, not anvils, but like big rocks to yeah. their ankles and bound them or whatever. And if they floated with a heavy rock attached to them in the river, they would kill them. But if they didn't float, then they would yeah. die. Wait, which means that what happened? <laughs> they, 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 yeah, a bunch of people, oh, turns out they weren't a witch. That's in the dark. That's my <laughs> bad, everyone. I thought. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Whoopsies. <laughs> At least they died in grace. All right. They um, died Mr. for the help. Yeah. Mr. Uh, Shader? Mr. Abbott? To to yeah. Okay. I don't know. I'm sorry. Uh, I don't think Maybe it is. This, uh, we know where you live part is another thing saying that, like, never see. And it says it twice. Mm -hmm. That means it's really important. Never. <laughs> okay. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah, safe path is three. Yep. So it's kind of like got continuing this idea of like the low flying Mr. Keller panic attack. You know, this is a real thing. This is an ever present sense of panic and angst and doom. All right, and Mr. Abbott.
I felt like this is kind of a paradox because the messengers aren't they telling people who is a witch? Well, think about the go back to the video. Messenger. Yeah, who's I the mean, messenger? I like connected it to the Salem yeah. kind of. Mm -hmm. And how like the girls made up that stuff, and they're technically the messengers, but they didn't face repercussions. So I would to that I would say we talked about this a little bit before you kind of came in. Messenger in this sense might also be someone who is bringing information of what's going on out, and yeah. this is all about restricting the flow of information and keeping things insular. Yeah. Like, like a cult. <clears throat> yep. So there's a double meaning. Double meaning, yes. yes. Um, another thing that I, uh, th this is great. Hey, this is a wonderful annotation of this poem. This is a wonderful annotation of this poem. And hopefully yours was as rich as what's going on here. I forgot to Eli. Yeah. And Eli and Rohal. And Zoe. And Zoe. Jeez Louise. All right. He's trying to get here to get going here. And Logan Nelson. Oh, oh. Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, we are hey, hey, we're hey, this is, you know, we're all in this together. We're not letting anybody get out of here. This is a very fur in the witch situation. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Prove yourself you're not a witch by making an annotation. What do you got? So I said that these three lines, which is like red crosses and, and then blue stock, is like a shift because the whole poem, it's like, order, it's like basically ordering people to do, like what to do if they're like encounter a witch, but then here they're also like kind of changing and saying they're suspecting everyone because they're saying they're talking to and if you are a witch, so like they're yes, they're saying yeah, they're good. Really that. That you're Very good. Z z z z All right, so kind of to go off the red crosses thing, like did they mark the houses because they were like symbolizing that those houses were fine and there was no witches. Or did they mark them because that house needed to be like burned down? It was, uh, they marked it for suspicion. So, like, if you had a red X on your door, that means they suspected you. Good. Is anybody familiar enough with literature to comment on like what else in literature has functioned as like a red cross? Oh, crusaders. Yeah. It's, well, in literature, like in our or life. Literature, the pursuit of happiness. Red right. Cross is a wonderful. Has anyone read the Scarlet Letter? That's what I was thinking. The 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 A, right? The A. The A the for adulterer. You the cross for which? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, <laughs> ah, that was the Rohau. Hey, Rohau's Rohauing right now. So I don't know if it's important or not, but I noticed that there's a lot of repetition. So uh, for the song, not only do they repeat the song, so it's in there twice. But they also repeat the lines, like in this one, they repeat burn the witch, so it's in there twice, and then they repeat both lines in this one. Mm -hmm. So, and what do you think is important about any of that repetition? Uh, I don't know. Maybe the main idea. Main idea of? Oh, the crowd. Yeah. <laughs> They're just reiterating. When, when they say sing a song, burn the witch, burn the witch, you know what That's the crowd saying. That. Um, Another, so great. Another thing that I caught on or I noted in mind that wasn't necessarily explicitly mentioned up here. What are they trying to do to this, you know, dark thing that they're doing? Trying to make it more negative. Yeah, they're they're trying to make it uh, dress it up, right? Cheer at the gallows. So yeah, you know, we're, that's weird, right? What? It, why would it make sense though for these people to be encouraged to cheer at the gallows? Yeah, but, yeah, to make it less, yeah, to make, to normalize what they're doing. Um, and I thought of that down here too, sing a song on the jukebox that goes. Well, I mean, jukeboxes are used for what? Public. Entertainment. And so our entertainment is what? <laughs> the way this, this uh, song is rolling here, just kind of like building on that idea. And then um, here I kind of had this identified, uh, these ones. From and if you or sorry, from loose talk down to do not react, that's kind of like a the the checklist that you need to have in order to like live by. If you want to function in this society, these are the rules that you have to behave by. Does that make sense? 
Hey, um, does anybody have anything else for this annotation wise that isn't already up on the board? It's okay to say no. And this is a pretty well annotated poem at this point. In class, can we all see kind of like what a well annotated poem looks like, possibly in its final form? You all did this. We it's annotate, it's good to ask questions, figure out what's this, notice things that are weird, notice shifts, notice paradox, and then after you go through it, you can come back and figure out. What is this? Why is this weird? Why is that important? What's going on with this paradox? Um, uh, what is the this? Well, this is just the gathering of the people to you know, get the riches. So the, the, well, the people. The, this is up. the society, right? This place. Who is the we? And the you, and it who's who identified that this is like a speaker of the poem, Miss Tronson, right? That the who who is what can you assume about like the speaker of this poem? No, the speaker would be the person who like is saying this. So the, are they warning the general public? Would this person no, be like somebody who's like the person who the would king. be? It says a king in the sixth sentence. It's the, it's the person. If if this was the king, this poem would have a different tone, because the if the king is giving people oh, advice about how to live in society, it would see. just be about like, hey, yeah, this is great, and then we burn witches, and that's how we know that we're safe, and uh, everyone loves it. Oh, is it like? Oh, he's like. I feel like it could be someone who manages to survive. Somebody in the crowd who is just kind of like. But doesn't actually yeah. go along. There you go. Yeah. <sighs> somebody who's kind of like a truth teller, but not somebody who's like leading out like a full on rebellion. Right, so Mr. Abbott? It's like, where did you not react? Like, yeah. It would be like, uh, hey, don't react. Um, yeah, yeah. Here's, yeah here, here's how you're going to make your way through. Person who might be concerned about having been born or moving into this town. Does this make sense for annotations? Okay, let's go to the uh, video here and let's annotate this bad boy a little bit considering the annotations we just made because there are some very interesting visual um, and artistic choices that help kind of corroborate some of the ideas that we already mentioned in our annotation. So, first of all, I mean, before it even fires up, what's the most striking visual... Or how would you describe the visual sense of this uh, of this video? Well, that, but what about like the, like the artistic style? It's a clay motion. Yeah, it's like a stop motion, clay people, kind of like childish, right? Yeah. It, artsy and fun. Um, why would it make sense to have that sort of like visual aesthetic for this? Song, considering what we talked about with our annotation. It shows the, the lie that it's like, it's okay. Like, like in the beginning of this poem. The more uplifting. We're all little puppets. Everyone in this society is a little puppet. Everyone in the video is a little puppet. Okay. What else can we, what else can we draw a connection to? Happy, and then dressing it up like it's okay. Yeah, it's it's dressing up this we this weird sad song, right? Is being dressed up with happy visuals. Okay, what can you assume is kind of like happening right here? He's talking about all the people, the witches are coming for us. It's, well, we, we've seen this before, right? Who he's not talking about the witches are coming for us. What would he what could he possibly be saying to all these townspeople? Let's go find witches. Be careful. We're talking about that. Tell them that it's coming. This guy's coming. Yeah. 
Who's this guy? Rich. The person who brings the hysteria to the um, he brings the hysteria to the town? No. He's an outsider. He's an outsider. He's the messenger. He's the maid. Yeah. He's he he's he's coming to do something. And what are these guys doing? They're worried about it. Yeah. They're they're preparing for his arrival. So you can imagine like what's he's what's he saying to the people? Watch out for this. Let's let's show this guy. Let's show this guy a good time. Oh, cheese face. What's interesting about their uh, faces? No mouths. No mouths. No mouths. Let's see if that remains. Let's talk, let's oh. keep an eye on the mouth stuff. Okay, he's feeling good. Right, what, what's he? What? So everyone's doing what right now? Cleaning up. Cleaning up. Yeah, Cleaning making it. Up. But you can begin to see some sort of like subversive elements right off the bat. What's okay. featured in here? Okay. Yep, we got we got some uh, got a jug of moonshine. We didn't know, this guy appears later doing what? Painting the red X. But right now, yep, I just paint the door. Stay in the shadows. Okay, how does that line make sense with what's happening right now in the, this visual story? Everything normal. So it's kind of a little ironic, right? Yeah. Because they're not they're they're in a shadow, but they're not in a shadow. They're not in a shadow because their town is being opened up to this guy. How are they though staying in a shadow? Keeping yeah, not showing the truth of their uh, little world here. <laughs> What's the name of this uh, restaurant? Spear Boar. 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 Not a. I mean, here's your first clue that something's not quite right. <laughs> And what do we have going on here? Red X. Yep, Red X. So the time, things are beginning to be revealed, but I mean, visually, this all looks like normal and happy, right? Yeah. But there's this dark undertone. You know, that's also represented in the music. Jesus. What? She has a mouth. <gasps> but she can speak out. He doesn't have a mouth. So she first and only mouth so far, right? Yeah. And what? how would you describe her expression? Sure. So is she somebody who's like in on the joke here? No. Where is, is she somebody who's like helping cloud the mask, the meaning? Or is she somebody who's in real danger? In real danger. Okay. <laughs> and then he's just like, what? <laughs> Sorry, bud. Ah, second mouth, right? He's shook. He's shook. Well, I don't. Does anybody know what this is? It's seesaw. What's a seesaw? But look. At, Look at its location. It looks like it's gonna like right next to a phone. This is this is a another device that they use to uh, test the witch. You know, they lift it up, they put you strap you down here in this chair, and then they let go of this, and you'd go underwater. And if you were able to seesaw back out, you're a witch, and they'd kill you, or if you died, you drown. Also, um, a torture device in medieval times too. And but what does it look like aesthetically though? Seesaw. 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 Two kids having fun. We have flowers all over this thing. I mean, what's kind of especially sinister about those two kids playing on that seesaw? They're all yeah, they're, they're yeah. These this thing is like it, it, it's child's game. Oh. Oh. Lindenberg, get a hold of yourself. 
full screen if you want. No, you're at like, like another minute. minute fifty-seven. Wait, Wendy, why is the messenger there? What is he trying to tell them? It's like a town inspector. Okay. I mean, you can see he's like walking around and making notes. You know, so he'd be like somebody who's like from the government. So he noticed that they were like burning witches. Bad. Yeah, I mean, his report goes back to wherever, and yeah, if it's bad, then you would imagine that there would be increased scrutiny on this little village. <laughs> Check this out. <laughs> how, how weird is that? <laughs> the king, king's just like, yeah. And this is something that we have that's quite fun. <laughs> and we, you know, to go back to Miss Mangine, what does this look like here? A little cult. You know, a bunch of people wearing their deer skulls, dancing around a tied up maiden with their swords. It's a reenactment. Now, do we remember her from earlier? Oh, yeah. She was no. Right no. no, she wasn't. She was in the circle at the beginning when the king was giving his little go-to pep talk. So is she in real danger? No. Yes. No. 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 no, this is like straight-up entertainment. I mean, she was walking around. King's like, hey, we're doing this. You will see her again at the end as well. So that's how we know that this one is not... She's one, she's somebody who's in on it. Whereas our Red X woman, um, she's in a tough spot. Also, again, note the lack of a mouthful. This is a nice little pleasant dance. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Yeah, keep moving on. And the baker, this seems like a nice thing. Until how do we have like dripping like fresh blood? Fresh blood. It's, like, oh, it's like the crows in the tides. Ah, yeah. Uh, you know, just you know, here we just just killed this cow, we're wrapping up in some bread, and there we go, cow pie. Literally, a cow. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, yeah, don't worry, buddy, it's delicious. <laughs> What specific line in the poem does this uh, visual match up with? Um, Abandon all reason. And what oh, else? it's a gallows. Cheering. Ah. Yep. And he's, like, and he's like, oh. And here, they're, so they're not even they're not trying to disguise the fact that they have gallows. It's not like it's gallows that is made to appear like a plant holder. Like, this is a straight up gallo, and we're like, yeah, look at how beautiful our gallo is. Uh, we just love letting the ladies come out and put their flowers on our gallows. Just keep on moving. Like, thanks for showing up. This one I have a hard time kind of like getting around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're all doing the same thing. They're all doing, they're doing a job, what filling up. What are those? Tomatoes? Tomatoes. Throw at the witches. Shoot the messenger. It just seems like they have an unnecessarily large amount of people. <laughs> and now, what's happening? Okay, hey, so we got our booze back. We did just have these weird things that were dressed up. And he was like, hey, look at this stuff that we're proud of. So we're dressing these things up. Here now, though, what does King Guy do? How is the fact that he takes a drink out of that sound like especially symbolic in some way, shape, or form? Is he like acknowledging that there's a problem there? It's the Kool-Aid. Or maybe, maybe Kool he's drinking it and saying, hey, it's okay. Here's some. Like, it's to, to me, I see this as kind of like subverting his piousness. Whereas before, he was kind of like, saying, like hey, we the, these gallows are, you, he can be making the argument essential. And so we dress them up because, you know, this is something that has to be done. Here, though, he's engaging in what 
they would probably be considered back in the days like sinful activity, keeping it hidden a little out of view from the rest of the townsfolk. This is kind of like the old boys club to me. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's great, buddy. Yeah, yeah you're really going to want to see this last one. Yeah, we got our, this is the girl that was tied up earlier. They anyone know Burning Man? Yeah. You pick out of now. Why would he? Why would he? Just check this one. It's just, like, hold on, find yourself there. Yep, just clo close the door. Like Okay. Oh! Yeah, who's, uh, what do we see here? The witch. It's the girl that was tied up earlier. What is, uh, what is written in all these boxes? Job's. Job's? J O B E S. Who's who is the bad guy and who betrayed Jesus? Who betrayed Jesus? Judas. Judas. Yeah. Judas. Does anyone know anything about Job? That's how what Job was up to? <laughs> the body. Nobody knows anything. Right. <laughs> now, serious. Watching again. Complete lack of a mouth. Again, suggesting what? Conformity. Yep. Um, what has happened in terms of like uh, time of day? It's like dusk. Sunset. Okay. Why does that kind of like make sense with what's happening here? Because they're going back into the shadows. Yep. We're going, and a, a dark thing is happening now. It's, hey! Celebrate. And he's like, Play the song on the jukebox. This is curious, though. Waving at us. Hey, you're nice yeah, just in, in the way in which it's kind of like the poem is addressing the reader, it now it's revealed that this uh, video is addressing who? Uh, the, the viewer. And they're waving, right? With this in the back. I mean, what does this kind of look like? We know where you live. Yeah, well, but if, you, if, if there was nothing terrible happening here, like this would be something that would be on a postcard, right? Or like a family photo. Yeah. Hey. Apparently, What's he's a biblical character known for being super patient. For super patient? Yeah. Well, all right. I don't know if that makes any sense with this. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah. So then. She was the messenger, burn the witch. The witch is who? The outsider. Think of more symbolic meanings that we could place upon the witch. People who try and change the subject. Uh, people who are responsible, like information, who represent. Like open or access to information. So the witch isn't necessarily this made up thing now. Now you can say the witch that we're trying to burn would be the people that are trying to change any of this stuff. The people that would be trying to act out at any of this stuff. Um, and then it goes on from there. <laughs> the, the very end, I found especially curious. It's back. And what can you hear in the background? Her and the birds was like, <laughs> Life is great. I like worms. <laughs> and what is he lacking now? A mouth. A mouth. Which would suggest what? Maybe not conform. Oh, but he's in silence. There you he's go. He's in silence. And why would he not choose to file the full report? Because if he sends anyone else there, they're gonna get silent. <laughs> what? Use a use a line. We know where you live. We know where you live. <laughs> Yeah, it's been scared into submission. All right, um, what you need to bring back to class tomorrow, uh, two sort of do-dadders. Do-dadder number one. We get done in seven minutes, right? Yeah. yeah. Do-dadder number Maybe you'll break us up before you leave. Uh, theme statement for this. And then uh, you're, so you're going to write two sentences. One, theme statement for this. Uh, two, write a sentence that compares or contrasts something about this with family tree. So you need to take the ideas that were in this, juxtapose them with the ideas in family tree, and have something interesting to say, a grand unifying thesis theory of uh, those two poems. So theme specifically for Burn the Witch, 
and then do something where you juxtapose burn the witch with family tree. Yeah. Sweet. Um, does anybody have any questions about that? I right, have eight minutes. Get one of those. Get half your homework done. <laughs> <laughs>